This year, all eyes are on the new Apple Watch Ultra, a bigger, shinier, and more rugged upgrade to its wearable line. It's designed to compete with higher-end sports and utility watches from the likes of Garmin and Suunto, and boasts a host of improvements, including a fully-fledged dive computer. It's also taught us that international orange is not an imported fruit. It's a color. Move aside, RGB. If you're gonna be out there taking risks with an $800 watch, then you should be prepared for adverse circumstances and the possibility that it might break. So let's take a look inside the titanium frame and see how easy a battery and screen replacement might be. Thanks to our friends at Creative Electron, we can see one of the more eye-popping bits in the invisible frame near the display. This is actually the GPS antenna pass-through. Just like these X-rays, L1 and L5 GPS signals can pass right through this material. This should be a welcome change given the Apple Watch's abysmal track record for GPS accuracy. Beyond the screws, everything is so densely packed inside the watch that we'll have to open up that ceramic back panel to really see what's up. All right, but before we take this thing apart, let's take a look at that Apple Siren. That Siren with a capital S, because Apple has to turn everything into a proper noun. Okay, so the instructions say to hold down the action button for a few seconds, and then we're gonna swipe right. Well, that's a bit disappointing. I could throw this thing at someone from 600 feet away and I'd have a better chance of getting their attention. That was weak. Let's get to the teardown. There's a promising, if incomplete, step towards improved repairability here. For the first time, the Apple Watch has screws accessible on the back. These are pesky, Apple-specific pentalobe screws, and the going isn't exactly easy once you get under the hood. But the fact that they're there at all is good news. It suggests a pathway towards enhanced repairability. The ceramic backplate comes away, revealing not a battery. What is interesting though is this gasket. It behaves more like glue. Unfortunately, it's destroyed the moment we take the backplate off, which means you'll need a very well-installed replacement to retain the 100 meter depth rating. Removing the two brackets further confirms that this is not the way to the battery. That's a huge bummer because now we're gonna have to risk destroying the screen. It's worth noting here that the raised lip might be a bit of an oversold feature because it does nothing for the real Achilles heel of this device. Any kind of impact that does not originate directly from the side. There's about 178 degrees of danger for the screen here. It's totally exposed. If you're out climbing and your watch face catches a jagged rock, you're gonna be looking at a screen replacement. I'm gonna put the watch on a heating mat for a few minutes. Look at that, it's baked. Probably a good indication it's time to start prying. The combo of flat glass and squared off corners means I can't get under the glass even with this thin metal tool. And the screen broke, son of a. This miserable screen removal process is bad news for anyone who cracks their display. The prying angle definitely makes it easy to separate the layers of the OLED. Lifting the screen away reveals that the screen's flex cable is buried under the battery. A few brackets and screws allow the removal of both the battery and Taptic engine, and another bracket reveals the push connector holding the screen flex cable in place. With the screen off, we can proceed to remove every single screw in sight. 32 screws later, we can remove the microphone and depth sensor, which finally allows us to remove the system and package. There's a few interesting hardware comparisons to be made between the Watch Ultra and the Series 8. For one, the Ultra's battery is 2.1 watt hours compared to the Series 8's 1.19 watt hours. That's nearly twice as large. The Ultra battery is also encased, something Apple had until now reserved for its smaller watches. But what's with this little cutout? I hate it, it looks like a hair. My guess is that it's a pressure relief cutout for end of life battery swelling. While we're comparing parts, look at the size difference between our hefty ultra speakers and the Series 8 noisemakers. Siren isn't loud enough, but this should help a lot with phone calls in noisy places. We would love to test the dive computer on this thing, but unfortunately the software that supports that doesn't come out till November and we might need to get a new watch. This one has some ingress issues. Hardware wise, we're left with an empty titanium frame. And honestly, it's really impressive on its own. The machining and attention to detail on these antenna pass-throughs and precision component cutouts, it's just gorgeous. The iPhone 14 opens from the front and the back, which is a huge win for repairability. The Ultra also opens from the front and the back, but in this instance, it doesn't get us anywhere. The cynic in me is still really mad that I broke the screen on this thing, but the optimist is hopeful that repairability will set future Ultras apart.